over the years a lot of things happened as we all know and in different universities as well and then the film started kind of we started recognizing that it has to go beyond our campus there was a certain frustration a, a vulnerability and a very fundamental reaction which we wanted to have as the basis of the film we like to use sound in a way that is very evocative rather than again illustrative and also this idea that the sound and image juxtapose can perhaps create a third image in the mind of the viewer i i actually use drawings in all my films and you know sometimes when you are making or writing a film uh, to sometimes you don't have words to express certain feelings the protests are also spaces where a lot of love is often blossoming and yeah, of uh, course you, you people are meeting and it, it is also a romantic space in some senses like we live in a democratic country and there are people who are uh, voting certain people in power it's not as if you know governments come from somewhere else right so uh, so we need to look at like our society our people our interpersonal relationships and i think that is what the film basically was trying to talk about and also kind of a self reflexivity on us also there is a certain politics in festivals also sure it's good to be happy about it but it comes with a lot of gaze uh, which we need to be aware of art is also not something which is pure or uh, there's always a, some kind of politics attached to it and as we've seen there's various kinds of uh, art practices in this country are you able to differentiate between the art and the artist an artist who does not remain your inspiration anymore but the art stays with you does that happen oh, oh, oh. i mean the whole of the 20th century art is problematic in yes. that <laughs> Welcome to Film Copat. There are times when cinema touches your heart and your mind in such a way that you feel a certain numbness running through your entire body. It unsettles you and maybe gives you a certain calm as well. It's really hard to describe. That's a paradox really. We had those feelings for the documentary film named The Night of Knowing Nothing, which won the Golden Eye Award for the best documentary film at the 2021 Cannes Film Festival. To discuss this truly path-breaking documentary which we feel like is cinema at its finest we are joined by the director of the docu Payal Kapadia with us today joining us also is Ranveer Dash who was the cinematographer and the editor of the film Ranveer as we found out was also the cinematographer of one of our favorite films of 2020 Lala aur Sabhi we have a review of that on our channel if you are interested so without any further ado let's welcome Payal and Ranveer for this interview thank you so much both of you for joining us today we are so excited and happy to have you with us Thank you so much for having us on your channel. We watched some of your videos, and they are really, really, you know, I think uh, things that people should be watching when they're interested in film. Thank you so much, Pal. We didn't so pay much. you to say this, right? You're saying it on your own. <laughs> 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 yes, of course. <laughs> uh, well, I, I'll jump right in, and like, uh, I, I really um, don't have a lot of words to describe the kind of feelings I got when I when I watched the film. Um, but one thing which I noticed is that. contrary to conventional documentaries uh, you have focused on the emotions of the people uh, you rather you capture rather than the facts or the chronologies of the events was this something you had in mind from the start or did it evolve at the editing table or the cinematography level uh so with this film actually when we started uh, shooting we were still students at fti at the film and television institute uh we were both students there and uh, at the time like we had just come out of the strike and you know there was a certain atmosphere on campus and we just had this kind of um, urge to document so at that time we really didn't have a sense of what this film was eventually uh, going to be so it was like we had one camera and one recorder and we were just kind of you know experimenting trying out things doing a lot of interviews and things like that but over the years a lot of things happened as we all know and in different universities as well and then the film started kind of we started recognizing that it has to go beyond our campus because we also stopped being students in 2018 and then you kind of get out of that narrow look at you know campus life that you are part of uh but i think because we were so much a part of things and anybody who's lived through these past 5 years we we'll have some emotional connect to the events that took place that we have in the film that it's very difficult at least for us to 
uh, you know have any other kind of ap- approach that was uh, and in fact that's what we wanted we didn't want it to have a very kind of factual or chronological or this happened after the other but a more and to get lost in the facts like right? we, we just wanted the audience to feel what in some cases what they themselves had felt maybe in the past and in other cases what we had felt and translate that feeling rather than to uh, translate what happened to explain what happened yeah because a lot of this information is available but there was something about the absolute you know kind of emotional i mean these were like what the things were on all our facebook walls during that time right a lot of this information and things but there was a certain frustration a, a vulnerability and a very uh, fundamental reaction which we wanted to have as the basis of the film right and i think what it does in the process it goes beyond the facts or you know things that might have happened in the country it it kind of talks about the youth across uh, you know different countries in similar situations and all of that the way you kind of capture the emotions over there tell us about this the way you have constructed the sound uh, it's amazing i was similarly fascinated i saw your uh, short the last mango before monsoon there were similar things like that but here the way it works you know none of the visuals is in sync with the sound so really wanted to know how did you go for that approach and what was the process of choosing okay this is the sound i put for this visual i i drop this and pick this how did that, that happen so like i said when we were making the film we got a lot of footages from our friends you know they were also shooting in different places and finally it became like what we like to call it like a found footage film you know and because also what we had shot initially when we were shooting we didn't know what it would be so even that in a way we were looking at it as found footage so i mean it had been so many years no we started shooting in 2016 and as years go by you change as a person you start looking at your own material differently so it feels found in a sense mm-hmm. because you are no longer that person so we had to kind of approach the film in as a found footage film and then sound becomes very important in a film like that because you know there's such a diversity of material and for us like like you said in my earlier film also i um, we like to use sound in a way that is very evocative rather than again illustrative so not and also this idea that the sound and image juxtapose can perhaps create a third image in the mind of the viewer um and can be filled up with the memories and things of you know the person watching rather than it being given in a sense so this was they're all experiments like you know we were doing a lot of trial and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't but this this for this kind of film there was a lot of uh, experimenting of this kind you know even when it is juxtaposing a certain text with a certain image without uh, relying too much on what is the information of both perhaps could uh, you know create some kind of sense in the 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 minds so the so the audio was also uh, approached in this way yeah and we we wanted it also to the film to move maybe in a slightly more lucid manner where it mm. didn't have to go from point a to point b it could have gone somewhere else and come back and i think that that this detaching the sound from the image kind of helped with that to me, help it move more like a dream or a nightmare how yes. to look at it but uh, and uh, i this is something that i i had seen this uh, master class of lucrecia martel uh and i really was inspired by the way she uses sound in her work and i think sound is a really important part of what she does and she had talked about it's a very famous thing she says like uh, a, a a a cinema hall is like a swimming pool and the image is something that is far away but sound comes in waves and it penetrates your body almost physically and actually if you think about it sound has a very physical reaction you know which is um which you can have because uh, because of the way sound is so i uh, we were thinking a lot about these ideas at some point and to see how we can uh, learn from them and try to use them in some way tell me pal is there any inspiration of very cool in your films because <laughs> because what happened for me i will tell you 
I watched Memoria uh, only a couple of days before I watched your film. And when I had watched Memoria, it, it's an amazing experiment with sound. And I was like, will we ever have a film which experiments so much with sound in Indian cinema? And I watched your film in two days and I was like, yeah, of course we can have something like that. So I was just wanting to ask this uh, to you. Do, do you get inspired? You know, is that an influence you have in your cinema? Very much, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like when we were also students, uh, what is very nice as a film student to do is to really like uh, study a films and study on director and how they are using each element of filmmaking, which is something we did a lot, you know, because you have that uh, privilege to kind of take time to do that. And it's something that uh, if you just examine his soundscapes and how with very subtle uh, movements, mm -hmm. he's really able to kind of penetrate somewhere that is, you know, that you don't really have words to talk about. Yes, and exactly. that is something I think that we were really inspired yeah, by for sure. uh, in, uh, in his work. And uh, actually, it's not just this, it's also this idea of using fiction and non-fiction together as an element is something that Apichat Pong uh, did very well in the film Mysterious Object at Noon. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a brilliant film. I think it's his first uh, feature length film. And I think with one of his most like kind of experimental in that sense. I mean, all his work is very avant-garde, but with this film. So this was a film that we were really inspired by as well. And also, uh, in this in this scenario, the 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 films of like Miguel Gomes also who does this a lot and uses uh, text and sound and kind of really you know the way to make films becomes itself the experiment and I mean that shows so a lot of filmmakers really. Uh, I think also for the sketches because. I remember there was this beautiful visual in um, The Last Mango before uh, Monsoon where there is this sketch of the lady uh, against the green uh, you know, background and slowly it fades away. So that's also reminded me a lot of Uncle Bonhomi. Uh, like, you know, the way the fading effect works in your film, even we have sketches in A Night of Knowing Nothing, it really, really, you know, gave the similar feelings. I, I actually use drawings in all my films because right. I like to draw also. And, you know, sometimes when you're making or writing a film uh, to sometimes you don't have words to express certain feelings. So you just do a drawing. Uh, sometimes those drawings, I just put it into the film. Uh, sometimes the drawing, sometimes some ideas are inspired by certain artists, like for another film of mine, Afternoon Clouds. I was very inspired by the paintings of uh, Arpita Singh. Uh, so I, I requested her and used her painting in the film itself uh, as it is. And for A Night of Knowing Nothing, our friend Suranjoy has done the drawings uh, because he also had this, uh, he's also a filmmaker and he had this, uh, he used to do a lot of doodles and drawings uh, in when we were in the institute. So I used to find it very uh, uh, inspiring his work. So for this one, we requested him to do it. The film also works as a great uh, tribute to cinema itself. Like, you know, there's of course references of Ghatak and Eisenstein and Kudov Kin, but I love this sequence where you tell that Il and, his, and her partner was watching this film uh, under the tree and then they start kissing and there it follows this Assamese melody and then there's one person watching Breathless, which is, you know, a romance in itself, a very different kind of one. So. What about this idea of juxtapositioning of, uh, you know, love and cinema, which comes across the film? Well, uh, in these kind of uh, spaces, like it, or what the film de deals with also in some kind of protests, like protests are also spaces where a lot of love is often blossoming. And, yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> you, you, me, people are meeting and it, it is also a romantic space in some senses. But with cinema, I think uh, e even the film which is uh, playing under the tree over there, which is Hun Hun Chi Hun Chi Lal, and uh, the English title is uh, Love in the Time of Malaria, and which is also a protest film, and it, but it is also about uh, love. And But I think that the main thing is that because it was a film school, uh, the film school was also a, a character in the film. And we, we couldn't 
like leave out cinema from the film like cinema had to be a part of the film because it was a part of everybody's life and it was also like something through which uh, a medium through which people would fall in love like in film school whether it was in the process of making or just in the process of discovering some kind of cinema in that process people were falling in love and so in a, in a film school is very much intertwined i think yeah and uh, like what you're talking about these films also it was you know we would do a lot of screenings uh, what we call in 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 uh, during the strike we would do a lot of open air screenings and things like this so we wanted to talk about some of that atmosphere and and yeah i guess because it is a film school we refer a lot to films can't be helped <laughs> uh one of the interesting things which i observed towards the end of the film when this uh, person is giving a speech about uh what is ftii and what is not having the baggage of history and not uh going forward what is the reality there this uh, uh he talks about that uh, you will go out and you will make films about others like all of you who go out to the institute so was it was it in your mind that okay let me make a film about this uh, fti itself about the people who are inside and what they feel and their struggle as well was there something uh, which which came up organically when you thought about it i think w- w- what he said was uh, make films for others but uh, i don't know that's yeah i think that's a yeah. difficult thing to do anyway you want to so, but like what i think what we what he was saying in the speech also is the kind of thing that we have a certain responsibility as filmmakers to uh, continue to make films that uh, that are relevant uh, of our times and what is going on around us and because we are not simply going to be you know making student projects that are just watched within the campus but they're going to go out and they're going to be seen so what is our responsibility does it is it just that you do one protest and forget about everything or do you kind of think about things even in the work that you do because you know art and politics are very much uh, one there's not you cannot separate them so i think that's what the that, that was the kind of uh, thing that nachi was talking about uh, in his speech but for this film also it was very much a film that we sort of kept going and trying things and figuring out you know what this film would be and looking for its form and shape and we somehow you know uh, the changing feelings as time went by and to incorporate some of those so in that sense i think it's a film that is made with a lot of trial and error experimentation and failure and uh, yeah i don't think i really answered your question <laughs> but <laughs> No, I think I think I I got I got most of it. <laughs> uh, but I would like to ask you now, and this was this was like really one of the central points of the film, that to the characterization of Elle's partner, uh, Elle's partner, you suggest you also suggest that not everyone who has ideals uh, and who like worships arts can take a strong stand when it comes to a personal space or personal sphere of 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 someone's life. Many of the students whom we see resisting in the footages might give in to some other like social custom uh, in the course of their life. Uh, so was it a conscious decision on your part to accommodate that idea of this paradoxical existence which we have in a personal level and at the societal level when we talk about it? Yeah, I think that was one of the key things that we wanted to talk about. and as you pointed out there have been many people who have also uh, in the years that have gone by have sort of changed also their uh, stances on certain things but more than that i think what it is is that like we live in a democratic country and uh, there are people who are uh, voting certain people in power it's not as if you know governments come from somewhere else right so uh, so we need to look at like our society our people our interpersonal relationships and i think that is what the film basically was trying to talk about and also kind of a self reflexivity on us also uh, coming from a lot of privilege that we need to kind of address some of these questions but the question of art is an interesting one mm-hmm. <laughs> because um yeah when you say worshiping art i mean like uh art is also not something which is pure or uh, there's always some some kind of politics attached to it and as we've seen there's various kinds of uh, art practices in this country and a lot of it is not 
align to say our film and our what we're trying to say within it so and even in within what, what, what we call uh, more intellectual art spaces there is still i feel uh, problems a lo- lot of problems yeah. which exist within those spaces as well and so it is in a way of what we've tried to maybe touch upon that and address yeah i mean there's so such a lot of contradiction right like that's the that's the scenario that we are in at the moment we live in such a contradictory society where people in public life and private life are completely different but also the battles that we have to fight with our families become very complicated and everybody uh, you know might have a totally different public persona but at home have a completely different way of being and i think that is something that even uh, we, we wanted to address in the film very strongly actually uh, because i think it comes to us also you know that we ourselves have failed in those things and not been able to talk about a lot of things when it comes to interpersonal relationships and things like this i have our biggest failures but i think that contradiction what it does is you know we are we are kind of used to see political cinema which is very black and white you know one side is all right one side is wrong and there's another counter film which say the other side is right and wrong here the way you bring the contradiction means it kind of captures the time and space and not about one being right and one being wrong that accomplishment happens in you know that particular point you put about el's partner and the way the letters go well some things are a problem they are definitely a problem there's no black and white in that yeah of course <laughs> 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 but i'm saying within our own uh Communities. community we need to kind of you know think about also these things and nuance in that but yeah sure. <laughs> i just wanted to ask you by like got a bit both of you that how difficult is it to be like self reflective in a movie which you are trying to make how difficult is it to look back at your own privilege and the uh, uh advantages you have and then talk about that in the movie like uh, what how does it how how do you do that or how how does it really work we don't know actually like i think that uh, it's very difficult and uh, we don't know to what extent like we we can try to some extent to be honest and to put something out but how much of that do we actually put out how much can we push that also uh, it, there is i think with more time and maybe with more reflections it will be the, the things some things will start to become clearer in that context yeah that's true everything is like a step hope hopefully a step forward towards that and we can only keep trying and of course we'll fail also and i'm sure we have but one can only attempt and tell us about this idea of you know showing the police woman the way you talk about them the way you feel about them else character as in show so did that also come out when you were going through the footages and you thought about this or this is you know the other side you also wanted to reflect on that intentionally yeah i think like firstly when you're protesting and you're a female protester there will be police women who will always be sent uh, you know to deal with the female protesters so this was an image that we've seen uh, every protest that you go to you see that right so uh, this was something that we had been talking about a lot and then there was footage also of the police lady shot uh, by our friends so we we were thinking about like this particular protest was that you know we were talking about affordable education affordable uh, university education which is i think one of the key themes of our film uh, public university education to be affordable then how are we like looking at somebody who is you know also a, a person whose kid will grow up and one day have to access the same education but they are being used in a system to be you know countering those protests so that kind of contradiction again uh, is something we definitely wanted to address and it's it's the frustration of it also and the kind of the next minute again you're being pulled or whatever yes. you know that happens in protest so uh where how do you kind of negotiate this and where you stand with it so this was something we definitely wanted to talk about and pasolini had written a letter to the students who were protesting in italy in 1968 which was a very different kind of protest 
uh, and he talked about how uh, you know the students have a kind of a bourgeois privilege and come from a very elite space but then you know if you look at a university like jnu the accessibility to education cuts across class so uh, this was the kind of thing that we were trying to talk about in the film uh, mm. that uh, you know that that who will who will be barred from the access to education could be her child as well and this was an important point that we we had been discussing amongst ourselves and we wanted to talk about you we were like introduced with els letters and her voice overs and interestingly enough el starts uh, talking in hindi and then there are like these uh, spaces where like uh, her voice is missing but imagery is there and then suddenly uh, she switches to uh, bengali so uh, was it like uh, like she started talking to herself or was it like she started talking to what he could have been like like you mentioned like i'm not no more writing to you i'm writing to the possibility of what you could have been so uh, so this is very interesting that's why i want to ask thank you for pointing it out uh, i think it's your first point that you have uh, identified it that it was more like a it became like a diary kind of thing where you know like we have this thing you no know, like uh, when you're especially at a university campus everybody speaks different different languages and you might like be in a relationship with somebody whose language you don't speak you inevitably end up speaking in hindi or english or you know something like that so we wanted to have that thing that maybe you know they were not from the same region also so she was speaking in hindi then he, she was no longer writing to him yeah so she could write in bangla because you know that's 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 her mother tongue so this this thing we wanted to do that even with the language even with the writing she kind of rejects uh everything and just you know does it for herself so this was one of the devices devices that we wanted to have in the film yeah it was very interesting when the switch happens uh, you know because we are bengalis we are like we were like very taken aback you know how suddenly the communication starts in bengali and it it felt more closer i would say yeah uh, riku is bengali so <laughs> yeah and yeah. Uh, yeah so we we i mean we i don't speak any bangla that i mean i can understand but there's mm. uh, not able to speak but again there's you know we meet so many people in university spaces with so many languages and it's such a rich part of our country uh so this was mm. a kind of an other layer we wanted to bring into the film also tell us you know at the end of the film there is this student who is saying that um, one of the big crises we have is we do not have anyone to look up to and we definitely feel that's not only for our country it's the crisis of our times so what do you personally do you know how do you fetch inspiration and where from you give the energy to go it going make cinema and all of that because we really do not have much people to look up to <laughs> yeah it's really terrible no <laughs> yeah, we are talking yes. <laughs> i mean yeah i think but i think if we don't kind of move on and try to sort of continuously address uh, the scenario and that itself is an inspiration no like the the crisis of of our times at the moment the everyday reality of what is there i mean we have to find some way to be able to address these questions and these contradictions in our daily life and yeah there is there may not be a person but we definitely have to find some ability to be able to address these things and i think cinema is or any art form or any kind of way that you can find a way to address these things even if it is uh kind of a instagram story or a tiktok video or anything that you do to create to address what's going on if you don't keep yourself engaged all the time then it's it's your own fault i think <laughs> i mean i'm not saying it like that but i'm saying that we we need to constantly do it and not hope that something comes from you know outside but there are people i think there are so many um, people doing interesting work in the internet space and things like this and you can find inspiration there also to be kind of be able to deal with things i think but yeah it's well, a pretty sad situation around the world you're right it is yeah and tell me i mean maybe digressing to an extent but are you are you able to differentiate between the art and the artist 
so you know an artist who does not remain your inspiration anymore but the art stays with you does that happen oh ho ho this is <laughs> i mean the whole of the 20th century art is problematic yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is a problem but yeah i think uh, to an extent, to an extent uh, one has to otherwise the whole history of uh, large amount of uh, painters and male painters and things like this in the past okay i shouldn't be this but it's it's it has been problematic and then to otherwise you'll negate a lot of you have to take things for as uh, long as maybe to to whatever your capacity or addressing that or understanding that as you are engaging with the art form then i guess yeah and to be critical also like i know that niku doesn't like me talking about it but this uh, you know when we studied cinema uh, in ftii we studied to uh, when we studied editing you would study eisenstein and you would study griffith right uh, you would study birth of a nation now we all know what is birth of a nation as yes. you know uh, the pro- the politics clearly Griff- griffith's politics is there but you still study it for what he was trying to do i mean he was a total racist bigot and extremely problematic chap but you still will look at you know continuity editing because ठीक है वो कर रहा था पायनियरिंग वर्क वो फील्ड में नाउ यू हैव टू रिकॉग्नाइज द कॉन्ट्रडिक्शंस एंड वर्क विद दैट बट देन देयर आर स्पेसेस वेयर व्हिच गेट्स बिट बेयर गेट्स मोर कॉम्प्लिकेटेड आल्सो राइट विद ग्रिफिथ्स इट्स इजी टू से दैट यू नो बट बट विद अदर पीपल देयर आर थिन लाइंस एंड दिस सम फिल्म मेकर्स यू लाइक आल्सो बट देन समथिंग कम्स व्हिच मे बी अ सटल बट यू फील समथिंग दैट यू नो दिस इज नॉट राइट बट इट्स आई गेस ऑल अ पार्ट and i guess it'll ha- it'll happen with us also at some point and it will be a part of moving forward and sure, sure. Sure. yeah we uh, had our experiences as well uh, <laughs> do tell us <laughs> sure sure yeah we'll discuss okay. <laughs> yeah uh, so this uh, is interesting uh, there was this uh, last dance uh, it, it sequence there before the documentary and so tell us about that sequence like do you see it as a dance of hope or do you see it as a dance of melancholy uh, this is a for me it's it's full of pathos and it's melancholic uh, but i think for a more positive person it could also be hopeful and i think we as we like you know it's open to how what kind of person you are and how you look at things because we had both reactions yeah and we we felt differently at different times also but to me the 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 nature of the camera movement in this part because if you see the first dance it's a static camera and it's a more of a stage uh, kind of sequence but the last dance is much more closer to the human body and there's a kind of a movement that's going on over there which for me at least has a great sense of pathos at least how i felt while watching it so uh, melancholy for me but it really is open to i think however you how what did you feel i felt it melancholy uh, actually why my personally i i i i didn't well i had a tinge of hope actually i wasn't really uh, i i was a positive person <laughs> i had some hope because that speech really riled me up when he talked about okay uh, yeah yeah, uh, yeah. He, he talked about that this is the reality this is what where we are and like now now let us define who we are so yeah yeah, yeah so, i think that his speech is very very powerful yeah yeah i think it depends on the day you are watching so it depends on what happened to you after before watching the film so and that's the beauty of the film it keeps on changing in its interpretation and with your time it keeps on changing in giving you the meaning so uh, that's an achievement yeah tell me uh, you know i watched one of your interviews i think both of you were there i think it was the tan post screening where you mentioned that um, this is not a film uh, where the nostalgia is about the past but it's more about the present that the pa- past has not been always so great so if you could just elaborate what you had tra- trying to convey uh i think like what we were trying to do especially with the image and the nature of the timelessness that the film has that it could actually be from any time uh we were very much uh, thinking about 
this particular time that it has been really really difficult but we also saw so many people resist and you know take to the streets and university students so it was also a time so the image had a sense for us at least we were trying to create a feeling of nostalgia uh, but because nostalgia is associated with something good uh, somehow you say that yes yes in the film also yeah. that is a line uh, and but we we definitely were not saying that the past was better because if it was so good then we wouldn't have arrived here right like it's not there were certain his, uh, wrongs that have been, that have continued and are part of very much part of our culture system whether it's economic culture religion all of these things are have been around uh, has uh, existed existed even before and perhaps even more strongly so yeah right. So now it's, it's not like with, with a change in government suddenly the country has changed it's always been this way yeah maybe right. it was not spoken about so openly uh, mm -hmm. but now uh, it's it's much more legitimized of course but it's not as if you know these things are not there so we, we, when we mean the present it's more to do with uh, a kind of spirit which we tried to capture in the film of which in many ways comes from university spaces itself a, a discourse of which originates not originates maybe but is prevalent in university spaces which allows for a bit of hope for future and i think it's very important that we protect these university spaces because i mean of course there are problems no doubt it's not as if you know uh, they've been in university public university spaces have been able to achieve what uh, what was initially thought about but still in in some senses these are more relatively uh, freer spaces where people can talk and discuss certain things and have certain points of views so in that sense uh, yeah it was kind of a homage well, we've benefited so much from being at fti and that it was affordable for so many people and it's so important that institutes and more institutes like this should exist why just sr fti and fti why not more film schools there are now every state has a uh, there are other state film schools as well uh, but there should be no like why should it be something that you have to pay so much to do so i wanted to ask a, a cliche question now so um, indian documentaries are making their mark around the world in the last few years we're seeing that so your film of course uh, won the golden eye last year writing with fire was nominated among the final five at the oscars this year and we're also hearing like great things about all that beats by shonok sen Uh, from Sundance and Cannes this year, and of course, there's many more to talk about. So, do you see this as some sort of a golden phase of Indian documentaries, as many critics uh, seem to be saying? I think it's uh, it's really good, no? Like so many films are coming out, and I think in uh, Indian non-fiction cinema has always been quite interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. It's in the space where a lot of uh, you know experimentation has been done in the past, also. uh now i think that there is so much more accessibility to the methods of filmmaking you know whether especially it's, documentary filmmaking yeah there's such a lot of less tamjam you need to make a non fiction film right like you can you if you have a uh, even with a phone or uh, like the image has become much more freer from a lot of things so you can use so many things you can use like found footage you can use uh, mobile phone so i think more films are also being made Than, yeah. than ever before, and that's one of the reasons why maybe films are doing better. And also, uh, it's not only films. As in, like we are living in a time where this kind of documentation has not happened. Like, it's not just with films; it's with uh, TikTok and Instagram, and uh, life is being documented all the time. And it, yeah, that's true. Like, it's maybe an extension of that. That there's yeah. so much of it that is like you know. you have those uh, stories on instagram right uh, they are also like a, you can make it like a little film no like it's yeah. yeah so i think people are figuring out methods of how to address non fiction and i think non fiction is a nice kind of way to you know do things at your own freedom and uh, try out stuff and it's not got so much and baggage of maybe it hasn't quite reached documentary cinema yet but documentation has certainly become much more democratic than it has ever been that's true so maybe as that progress is you know there will be a sort of a less of a bridge between different like people will be able to see 
other people's points of view etc more and more yeah but all these festivals also yeah it's really good and it's nice to have it uh, at festivals because we don't really have too much documentary distribution in india like you have to go to the cinema to watch a non fiction film right so in that sense is festivals do help but there's definitely a certain point of view that festivals have and you know we have to keep that also in mind that uh, let's not you know like of course it is really good i'm not negating that at all but maybe that is not the only perspective uh, that says whether the documentary scene is active or doing well or not mm. the festivals are a, we all know you know there's a certain politics in festivals also sure it's good to be happy about it but it comes with a lot of gaze uh, which we need to be aware of i am not even sure if i should talk about your film to be only a documentary i mean it's so much more than that it it has this kind of a dreamy feeling and it's kind of a chris marka zone it's not you know docu or definitely not fiction but not only docu as well chris marka was a huge inspiration uh, actually like you know you see sosole so many times and every time that film gives you something else like you said very nicely like whatever mood you are in at that point that film you the words that will stick out mm-hmm. will be your you know state of mind and i i think that film gives gives you a lot every time you uh, you watch it and you know the thing of this sansoli right like he is everybody in that film like he has changed right. his name as the editors uh, like he it is him only doing all the mm-hmm. thing he's only done the sound but he's given himself some other name so this i thought was like wow <laughs> you know how can you do this so it really freed up our minds that yeah. you know what is documentary what is fiction and how can you kind of work in these spectrums uh, in between yeah which should actually be more liberating rather than you know saying that are this is this or this is that people are so desperate to kind of uh, and even when you are shooting a documentary film in most cases you are shooting like you are going out looking for something particular exactly you already sort of know what film you want to make and so uh, then rather than like restricting yourself to trying to recreate or find that in reality you just figure out ways to say what you have to say anyway okay, without and i think along with uh, chris marker uh, john burger's writing is also in this zone of fiction and non fiction which a lot of his work like our faces my heart as brief as photographs is a book of his where he uses a lot of like non fiction pieces along with fiction poetry and so even the books his books are also kind of structured in this free uh, floating way so this is also something that was interesting uh, as a form that we were looking at and any any you know upcoming uh, uh, you know opportunities to have any screening in india because i'm sure when we put it out on our channel there will be so many question about how do we watch the film yeah. we actually were going to premiere it at mami uh, because, yeah yeah so mm. that because it is a festival that happens in our city and a lot of the people who worked on the film or gave us footages uh, are now based here uh so so we thought it would be a good opportunity to share the film in that context uh but then the festival was not going to have a physical screening which we thought it, it was really disappointing for us we were really geared up for it so we are sending it to other festivals so let's see when yeah we are uh, really hoping to send it to kerala and you know maybe kolkata will have us uh so this is i mean obviously like now we have to change a bit the plan and and all everybody wants premiere so this is the thing but definitely we are going to send it uh, to these festivals i think there's a bit of a delay also right now because since covid everything has gone a bit askew mm-hmm. uh, right this is the plan for now that's really that's good to know any new projects you are working on both of you yeah we always work together uh, so the next project we've been also working on for a long time it's a more fiction project uh, also an impossible love story uh, based in mumbai uh, and uh, this particular one is kind of uh, based in the lives of nurses in bombay so this is also a project that's been ongoing for many years in the middle of which a pandemic happened so <laughs> it's uh, so hopefully uh, sometime soon we'll be able to yeah know, shoot that shoot film it. so let's see uh, all our projects take a really long time and but i think that's how it is if you want to make films uh, 
like out of any industry context then it just takes time to be able to, to find to, yeah of course yeah but, uh, and it just takes time <laughs> but that's fine i think you can you can give it that Sweet. time we wish you we wish you all the best uh, for this for the upcoming film which you're working on also we hope that very soon you'll have screenings of uh, the night of knowing nothing uh, around in kolkata preferably even in kerala <laughs> so and i think we are we are we are really privileged to have watched this uh, amazing amazing film which uh, you guys brought to us and uh, i think we are towards the end of our discussion for today thank you so much fail thank you so much ranveer and um, thank you for 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 coming for this interview and thank you for making this wonderful movie which gave us so much food for thought thank, thank you, you very much thank you for having us